Welcome to the Yang style, long form Tai Chi class on PTTV. I'm Michael Gilman. Welcome again. Well, we're fast approaching the end of the long form, and there's been great discussions in the, about what we're going to do next. And uh, it hasn't yet been decided, but I'll let you know as soon as possible. You know, one of the beautiful things about live TV, which we are live at the moment, is that you can get back at the people who do little tricks to you. Like in the control room, there's Anna Bachman and Gary Nelson, you see. I mean, uh, Gary Lemons. And um, poor Gary Nelson, now he's an innocent. He, he came in, he usually works camera, but so Gary Lemons. And they're both two really troublemakers. And when they're in the control room together, it all hell breaks loose. So if you, if anything goes wrong in Port Townsend in the next few hours, we can blame Anna and Gary, I'll tell you. So take that, you two. Okay, you can be sure this is going to be edited out, right, for the taped version that goes on later. All right, so um, we have some, uh, some nice movements that we're going to work on. Another, our last single whip, which is a, which is a fun single whip. Uh, snake creeps down, we're going to revisit again with a slightly different application. Retreat to ride a tiger is a new movement, but one, but it's really stork spreads its wings, very simple. And turn around and kick, the most, one of the more challenging of any of the movements, but um, we're ready for it, aren't we? Okay, so here we go. Feet solidly on the floor, turn the waist. <clears throat> now, again, uh, even if you're not following along and you're just sitting there, get up and at least do this piece. You'll feel a lot better. Turn the waist. Keep your feet on the ground. Turn your waist. Relaxing. So you're getting nice spinal exercise. Arms are relaxing and stretching. Shoulders are relaxing and stretching. Then rolling down, spinal exercise, torso, legs, I'm working the ankles and the knees. Rolling up, nice and easy. Shake, shake. Light and free and easy, light and free and easy. Right. Particularly, now this is very good for those of you who work in offices and tie, or sit at the computer a lot and typing. You know, you're always, your, your wrist is always like this, so, you know, carpal tunnel problems are rampant. So this shaking and loosening is going to, is going to help. It's going to help. So, so just do it. You know, it's like if you're, you're sitting at your computer or you're, you have some kind of job but you're writing all the time, well, take the time every, you know, 10, 15 minutes to shake out. It'll be a lot better for you, all right? You get the circulation going and the nerves, uh, you know, properly aligned and chi flowing. Okay. And uh, shaking the feet. Yes, nice, easy shake. Getting the thighs, loosen the feet. All that, very good. Good, and little kick outs, open up the hip joints. Once again, shake. Kick. Kick out. Turn the waist once again. Rolling down. Rolling up. Okay, Wu Chi stance. Feet pressing down, knees soft. Pelvis slightly tucked under. Top of the head lifting. Chin slightly tucked under. Shoulders and upper ribs suspended from above, just hanging. Breathing in and out through the nose, directing the breath to the lower belly.
Take an integration breath. Feeling the energy move down through the body. Look at it with your eyes. Taste it in your mouth. Hear it as it moves through. And down. All right, very good. Okay, well, I, I sort of feel like a, uh, like a, a, you know, a horse that's nearing the, coming back to the stable. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm picking up my pace, I know that. And um, basically, by now, you should have all the basics down, all the basic uh, movements. We've been doing this for, I think, 30 something, like 32 weeks. So we, we're doing really well. So. We're going to add in, uh, I think I'm not going to do a, a Qigong exercise today. I'm just going to work uh, right on the, um, some of this last pieces of the form. And um, Stephanie Morell is going to help once again be my victim, and um, I'll call her out. So first, let's uh, go over uh, sort of the last week's uh, movements. We'll do um, single whip, clouds hands, single whip. Partition, uh, high pad on horse, plane cross hands, etc. Okay, so let's do it um, so you can follow along. From push. I uh, better come down here a little bit if those of you are following. Okay, single whip. So this is the double punch one, two, open, and a nice round strike. Cloud's hands, this is, this is uh, guarding against a foot kick. And up, feet together. One. Two. Three. Single whip. Here I'm stepping behind the opponent, throwing them over the leg, then neutralize, pull, and strike. High pad on horse, plain cross hands. Sitting back here, there's a punch coming to my lower belly. Neutralize it, step in and poke. Turn, cross foot kick with sole. First a low strike, then an upper strike and a kick. Step up and lower punch, neutralize the punch, neutralize, and striking down to the basic crotch kind of area. Then ward off left. Remember, this is sort of a slicing cut through and following it with right push upward, which is also a slicing cut through. Then roll back, press forward. and push. Very nice. So that's a nice, that's a nice section, not too difficult, uh, a nice, some nice movements. All right, let me demonstrate the movements that we're going to do today, and then I'll call Stephanie out. So I'll, I'll show you from the front. So we just finished grasping the bird's tail. Push. The last single whip. We come around, circle, step, and throw. This is going to be a throwing movement. We're then going to do snake creeps down. We're going to get back and actually get back out of the way of a foot kick. We're then going to shift, step up, to form seven stars. Retreat to ride a tiger. And turn around 
and kick horizontally. So does that look interesting and fun? That turn around and kick horizontally is uh, one of the challenging movements of the form, and everybody always, when we get to this place, they always sort of start to freak out a little bit. And what we can do is uh, what I've told sort of the people in my classes who are not quite able, you know, physically to do it for some reason, is that you just leave the thing out. And I'll show you when we get around to it, I'll show you how we do that. But don't worry about it. Uh, you can leave it out. You can leave out any of the movements. None of them are really, you know, life essential. Okay? So if I, if I can call Stephanie out here and... Um, we will then demonstrate, hello, she's spending more time on, as much time on the screen as I am, so almost, a, okay. So um, the first movement is, a, is another application for single whip. This one's kind of interesting. I like this one a lot. This has a, has a really nice kind of a flowing circle to it. So in it, She's going to be grabbing. Now, grabbing, uh, somebody grabbing is one of the more, you know, usual sorts of aggressive actions. So, in this case, my partner has grabbed. So, if I fight, you know, it just kind of gives her a root and she can then throw me. But what I'm going to do now, if you watch this, see, is this hand's going to come over and kind of break her hands loose. I then am going to circle her around, and as she spins around, I'm going to step behind her, grab her here, and throw her away. You see? So once again, so it, um, you see it's like so. But if I held on to her, I could, th and throw her over my leg, I could throw her down to the ground and such like that. So what that one, okay, so if you just stand there, what that one looks like is you see him coming, she's, there's somebody grabbing, break, circle, grab, and this is also against their body and we throw them over and down. Okay, so next, um, she's going to be kicking towards my head. Now, in the first snake creeps down, if you remember, the punch was coming towards my lower body here. So what I did is I neutralized back and then came under and attacked, like so. In this, in this case, my uh, opponent is going to be kicking towards my head, right? So I could stand there and block it like so and hope, but that's, that's probably not a good plan. So as she comes to kick, Basically, I'm going to get out of the way. Okay. So as she kicks, you see, I just get back and out of the way. But I, of course, not only do I want to get out of the way, but I also want to control the situation. So as she comes back, you see, I catch her. Then I step up, lifting her up, and if I was mad at her, I could throw her here, or I could step in and kick her while I'm controlling her at the same time. Um, you'll also see uh, sometimes when the, when, the, when the kick comes in, as the kicking hand comes in, I mean, as the kicking leg, you, you just bash the knee. It's very, it's all kind of a hard style. Oh, I got her. <laughs> kind, of a, kind of a hard style, but um, it works. Okay, so this one, snake creeps down. What it looks like is there she's kicking. I turn out the back toe, get out of the way. This hand stays up. Then I catch, move in, and step up, either kicking, step up to form seven stars. Okay? Next is called uh, Retreat to Ride a Tiger. And the ending position is Stork Spreads Its Wings. It's the same looking thing that we've just been doing. But we're coming to it from, usually we do stork spreads its wings. Remember the first one is we stepped around and came in. The second one is we shoulder strike and came up. The third one is we neutralized. We came in with the elbow strike and then came up. This one, it's a straightforward kind of movement. And um, maybe let's do it on this side so you can see. <coughs> so 
There's two different things traditionally that people do on this. Is one, she's going to kick me in the hip, kind of hip area here. And so what I do is I step back and grab her. And this is up for balance, you see. So that looks, that looks like, like this. Or she's going to give me a kind of hook me around try and, and hit me in the temple, hit me in the face over here. And as I step back, I just neutralize back. And this is down here for balance. Okay. So either using one of those. Sometimes I've seen it like um, somebody, say, if you were me, you know, so uh, you're in step up to form seven star. Well, I've seen the application being that somebody's kicking and hitting at the same time. Well, uh, I can't sort of imagine that one myself, anybody ever doing that. But, you know, well, it looks good. OK, next is um, turn around and kick horizontally. So this is that nice big sweeping round. Sometimes this is called sweeping lotus kick. OK, so Stephanie from Retreat, Stephanie is punching towards my center again. So as she comes in, I'm going to neutralize her hand. Now, her energy is headed to my right side, right? So she's coming in, right? right? My body is starting to turn that way anyway, right? So I'm turning this way to neutralize. So I'm just going to follow along, continuing this energy, and I spin around, and now you see I'm behind her with a whirling kick, and I can kick her with a, uh, what's called a sweeping, a side of the foot. Now this is the first time we've kicked with the side of the foot. We've had the toe kick, where we kicked with the toe upward. We've had the sole kick, where we generally kick to the center with the heel. And this time we're going to have what we call the sweeping kick, or kicking with the side of the foot. You'll see this is, a very, this is a very common kick in a lot of the martial arts, right? So sweeping around. OK, so I think that's probably about it. So thank you very much. Thank you. So that last, uh, that last movement is Stephanie. I'm just going to duck right underneath there. <laughs> and you, we saw her at home. There she goes. That's right. She needed to do her snake creep just down movement to get in there. But OK, so the turnaround looks like spin around and kick. Now, also, you'll see most of the people who do, do this turnaround and kick, the kick goes very quickly. You know, I, I, don't like to, I like to do the kick the same slow, even speed as all the rest, right? So um, nice and easy. OK, so let's start working on the first uh, movement, the single whip. <clears throat> now this single whip foot movement is the same. From grasping the bird's tail, from push. Shift back, turn to straight, shift and pivot, step straight towards the left wall, and shift making sure that when you step towards that wall, you step wide enough to accept your weight. Now, foot movement again on this direction. One, coming back. Two, turn to straight. Three, pivot. Four, step to your new direction. And five, continue. Now, the, as always, the most common error is this. One, leaning back. Don't lean back. So the thing, now watching my body, here's what most people do, is fall into that foot, you see? No. You want to make sure that when you step, you sink your weight deeper into the weighted foot, right foot, and then step and continue on. All right? OK, hand movements. Now, basically, the hands are going to be making this big, nice circle in the front of the body. Circle, circle. 
So they're going to come, circle around, and continue their circle. So the hands are going to come, break the hold, around, grab hold, disattach, and throw. Right? Circle and throw. Okay, let's see how that looks. Let me do it, show you first from the front how that looks together. One back, relaxing. Two. So I've kind of broken the hold. Spin, start the spinning around. Grab with the left, right is ready, and throw. Turn in the back toe. So at the end, we're basically the same place that we usually are. But uh, we arrived at a slightly different place, time, way. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, this direction. One. Make your hook. Neutralize, get your root, and throw. Okay, again. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now let me flow through this one more time on the front. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now snake creeps down. Again, most important thing is you're getting your head out of the way. Now, there's, you'll see that a lot of people who do, who do snake creeps down um, with a different application do it like, like so. You see, well, you could see that if somebody were kicking my head, I probably wouldn't feel too comfortable doing that. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the back toe like we did last time and shift over and just kind of get back a little bit. Now, it, you know, depending upon your, your flexibility, you can, you know, sit as far down as you like. Uh, you want to make sure that this knee goes in the same direction as this toe. Don't let this knee collapse. Can you see this doesn't look too comfortable? So keep this out. Okay? But uh, you do it whatever level that you want. I mean, depending upon your, you can just come back a little bit. That's fine. And in. Or more and more. So, one, turn out the back toe. Two, shift back and down. Keep your back straight. Keep the, hand, the hands in basically the same position. One, open. Two, shift back. See, this is catching. We're not going to come down here because this wants to block or catch. And three, come back up, fold in, and make a fist. So snake creeps down is one, two. Step up to form seven stars. Shift back in catch. Turn in the back toe, making a fist. Now this is a slightly tricky part here. Because I've got a big wide stance, I'm going to turn out the front toe, because I want it to be at the proper angle for my, my movement. And then you have to really stretch up and do dingbo stance on toe. Now, uh, let me uh, do this facing here so you can see the uh, leg. Open, shift back, shift forward, catch, fold in, make a fist. Make a fist here and slide the right hand underneath the left. The fists are facing forward. Now this is also very good. This particular movement is used um, 
for various, it's a very good tool. If somebody were kicking toward the, your, the crotch, for instance, uh, it's, it, it's hard to block it, but this can stop it. This kind of a thing is very good. It's a very strong structure. You see, if, say, the energy is coming in, it's just right down catching. Also, if they were, if they were coming up towards the, the face, you see, you could block like a, like a knife or, or something punching downward. You can block it like so. In this case, uh, this is more of a punching motion rather than a blocking. I've grabbed her, and this is going to be possibly punching. Okay. So, once again. <clears throat> from single whip. The snake creeps down, turn out the back toe. Now your hips and everything open to the corner as you go back. Don't open and try and come straight back or you're never going to make it. The body can't creep down if you're facing directly straight. So we're going to turn out the toe. Our body's going to face to the right corner. You see, then I can come back forward, turn in the back toe, out the front toe, roll up and step dingbo stance on toe for seven stars. Okay, once again, I'll do it in this. This is the direction we're going to be doing it at home. Turn out. Turning and opening to the right side and ducking. Shifting forward. Turn in, fold, make a fist. Turn out rolling up and step up to form seven stars dingbo on toe okay once again let me do it facing facing here turn out creep down shift pulling back sinking back shift forward grab the leg turn in now I'm basically facing straight ahead I've got the hand here. Make a fist, catching. Turn out the front toe. As you turn out, push off the back foot so you have the weight on this left foot and d pulling up dingbo stance on toe, two hands forward. Okay? So let's do uh, all of this. Single whip. Shift back. Circle. Pivot. Step. And throw. Snake creeps down. Open up. Shift back and down. Ducking. Come back up. Catch. Turn in the back toe. Turn out the front toe. And step up to form seven stars. <clears throat> Once again, watching from the front. One. Single whip. Neutralize around. Grab and throw. Snake creeps down. Open. Shift back and down. Catch. Turn in. Turn out. Step up to form seven stars. Now the next movement, retreat to ride a tiger, is pretty simple. Step back the right foot to a 45 degree angle. As you do that, the two hands sort of open and relax. Now, you don't want to, you don't want to step back on it quite yet. You don't want to move your weight back, no. What you're going to do is sink in the front foot and touch back. Then neutralize down with the left and excuse me, up with the right. So these hands, now watch. One. Two. It ends up in the same basic spot that we've always been. Although traditionally, this is a little bit wider movement. Usually, stork spreads its wings is a little tighter. Uh, this retreat to our tigers a is, gives you a little more uh, width here. Okay? So it's 
one, neutralize, and I neutralize, this could be a strike. Okay? So from, from this place, relax. The right hand sort of turns upward. Shift back, block, and block, or you could see either way. Okay, this way. Relax, step back, neutralize down, and up. Okay. Let's put this in with the rest of ours. It's uh, warm in here today. Single whip. Mm -hmm. Two. Three. Four. Five. Snake creeps down. One. Two. Step up to form seven stars. One, two, three, four. Retreat to ride a tiger. One, two, three. There's this little kind of a little replace there at the end. Usually, when we're moving into Dingbo stance on toe, we always lift it and replace it, because that, that just shows us that we, yes, we could do, we could be doing a foot kick, we could be blocking, we could be doing anything here. We're, this is empty step. So we're just sort of saying, okay, empty step. Okay. Okay. So, the turnaround. Now, Ideally, you see, uh, like in my studio, I have a wood floor, and it's pretty easy to spin around, to do this spin around. What's, what's going to be happening here is the weight is going to be on the right foot and stay on the right foot. And we're going to use the momentum and turning of the torso to allow us to spin around. Now, I spin around on the toe. Now, when you, when you turn around, if you go on the heel, it's very hard to do, keep one's balance. Now, remember, the punch is coming in. I'm already, if I've neutralized, I'm already almost halfway around. You see, here's my upper body, here I'm facing straight. Now, by the time I neutralize, you see, actually I've come a quarter of the way around the circle. So I just need a little more to put me all the way around. So don't try and first turn a little bit to the left and then try and make this, it makes it much more difficult. Um, some of the other tips. What's going to happen in the beginning is when you're practicing this is, so I have my knee covers my toe, the same basic height. Well, what's going to happen, now give me a little headroom and you'll see what's going to happen here, is what most people do is they stand straight up and the energy goes up into the top of the head and it becomes too heavy and they lose their balance. You see, this is what happens. You see, it be, and, it, and it's very difficult. Keep your weight down. In fact, sink it as deep as you can. Relax. Keep the root on the right foot. Now, when you're learning this, it's going to be frustrating. It's difficult. I remember when I learned it, you know, it just was a very difficult movement. And, and you will also see, if you watch any videos of the, you know, Tai Chi teachers and masters doing their forms, it's a very difficult movement. It's a very hard one. So it just takes some work. Now, in the studio here, we've got sort of a, a short carpet. And it's not ideal, but it's certainly, I, I, you couldn't do this uh, like on a shag carpet or something. Um, linoleum is a nice thing. If you have like a kitchen, you can practice this in. In the park, 
when we have grass, when we're practicing, it's a little tricky. Sometimes if I, you know, if it's fresh grass, I won't do it because I don't want to have a divot. I don't want to, you know, you know, mess the grass up. It's hard to do in sand. So I just would leave it out at those times. But other than that, I mean, when I'm in the studio or when I'm in most practice places, uh, I can do the turnaround without any problem. And of course, I miss it, you know, I miss it sometimes too. It's just, it's just a, you know, it's just a sort of a difficult movement. Um, so what's going to happen is the right hand is going to come down to waist level and the left hand is going to come up. So actually here I'm on the wrist and elbow of my opponent. As the punch is coming in, this hand attaches to the wrist, the right hand attaches to the wrist, and the left hand comes to the elbow. So I continue that around and spin around. Now, if you, if you notice this right foot, if I do the spin around, the right foot is going to help me. Now watch it. Don't get too close, but, but, but kind of watch it. Now watch. You see, that time it actually touched all the way around to give me some balance. Now watch again. So I start on Dingbo stance on toe. And ideally, I end in Dingbo stance on toe. In the beginning, I remember what used to happen is you kind of fall into the foot. Well, that's OK, because next we're going to kick. If you have to, that's fine. Another thing that you can do to make it easy is you can just walk around. You see? You can step, step, step. That's fine. I mean, there's Taiji, you must do whatever is comfortable for you. Relaxation is, our, is, is most people's major goal in Taiji. So if doing the turnaround, if it creates too much tension and that, that, and that, it doesn't matter, just leave it out. I'll show you how we do that in just a second when we go to the next movement. Um, just leave it out or, you know, walk yourself around or continue tr practicing doing your spin around. It'll come, you know, most people get it. So, so, so don't worry too much about it. So the hands, again, the right hand is coming down, the left hand is going, and, and it, the hands are basically going to stay in the same place in relationship as we spin around. Now I spun around, then my little mic came off. So that's one of the problems with spinning around. Okay, so once again. Turn. This could probably be like a little test. If you can spin around and, and, and the mic doesn't fall off you, you probably you know have done it smoothly enough. Okay. So the hands are going to be end up in approximately the same spot. Okay. So this is like in 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 most martial arts movies, you see this spinning kick. It's a very famous kick. It's a very showy kick. It's a very powerful kick if it would ever land because you've got the momentum of the body as it goes around and then you have this big leg sweeping around with a lot of force behind it. Uh, this is what we call sweeping lotus kick or kick sideways. And um, so it's a fun movement. Right? Okay, so once so again. So let's see, uh, now watch as I, as, I, as I do this whole thing. Right? So, neutralize. Now here I go, I've got my momentum, spin around, touching down with the toe. I'm facing, basically I'm back where I started. Now, do you, I'm going to step slightly to the left with my left foot. See, here I am, I'm stepping behind Stephanie. And here, I'm placing my hands on her, either her arm or her back. Now, she's over here. She's like over here someplace. So I then lift the foot up. It comes basically straight up and then straight over and comes back. So this kick is a nice circle. 
This is one of the warm-ups that we do uh, you know, in classes in which we, we will be doing. Remember in our, in our circling Qigong way, way back, a couple of months back, we did this. So the leg can go whatever height. It can, for instance, some of you who don't have as much strength, it can just go just a little, a little around. For those of you, you can go up to the knee. See here, here it could be just kicking the ankle. Here it could be kicking the knee. Here it be kicking the waist. Here it could be kicking the chest. Here it could be kicking the head. So you can do it however, however you feel or feel like it. Right? Whatever level. You want to be working on getting it up more, of course, so better exercise for the hip joint and more like that. Okay? <clears throat> so let's look at it in the, in the form. Right? Let's go back and put it in here. <clears throat> First single whip. Circle. Get your root, then throw. Snake creeps down. Turn out the back toe. Shift down and back. Keep your back straight. Shift forward. Catch. Turn in the back toe, folding, making a fist. Turn out the front toe, roll onto the foot. And step up to form seven stars. Right hand under left. Retreat to right a tiger. Relax the hands as you step back. Neutralize down with the left and up with the right. Turn around and kick horizontally. Okay. And just so you can put your foot down, just put your foot down and we'll, we'll work on the next uh, movement later. Okay? All right. That's... Uh, that's a lot. That, that uh, the spinning, the turn around and kick horizontally, you just have to take the time to practice it. Don't be afraid. Now let's do it this time. This time let's do it, this whole sequence, only I'll show you how we can leave out the spin around, okay? We'll do everything but the spin around, okay? So I'll do it facing you and we can just do a review, okay? Single whip, over, bring the arms down, and bringing them around, grab a hold and throw. Turn in the back toe. Snake creeps down, open up, shift back and down, keeping the hand forward. Shift forward, grab, turn in the back toe, Turn out the front toe, roll onto it, and step up to form seven stars. Don't reach too far. It can be, if you want to, you could do it facing down, you could do it facing up. Sometimes you'll see people doing it here. In the center of the chest is nice. Retreat to right a tiger. Okay, as promised, we're going to eliminate the foot, the spin around, we just move right into the kick. Step straight ahead with the left foot and kick whatever level you want and come back. Okay? That's a lot easier, isn't it? Anybody could do that, okay? So from retreat to right tiger, you just step. Imagine that, that, that your opponent is sort of over on this side of your body. You step behind them, and this, these hands are kind of pressing against them, and you spin around and kick and come back. Very good, huh? So I've just given all of these people license to not do their turnaround, and in the classes they're going to say, hey, we don't have to do it anymore, and all of that. But um, you, you, have to, you have to do it. Really make the best attempt that you can to do the turnaround, right? Because it you're just working on your balance and coordination, and, uh, whoosh, and it's fun. Okay, it's very impressive when you do it. And of course, uh, most people, when they do the spinning foot kick, they add a, a kind of a, um, they do the, the kick faster than the rest. 
So it's very impressive, and they make a little sound like so. Like usually they do something like this. So like if we get Bijou kind of thing, they go. So there's this little noise by hitting the foot, and it kind of scares the little kids and stuff. That's so. Uh, that's that. Okay, let me just show you um, how close we are to the end. We only have just very, very few. So after turnaround, kick horizontally. This is called shoot a tiger with bow. Very simple, straightforward movement. Step up, deflect downward, and punch, which is basically, we've already done this. Withdraw and push, a very simple application. And conclusion, which looks like cross hands, only we don't come up. We, we then finish. So next lesson, for sure, we're going to finish. So that's really exciting. Then I'm sure what we'll do is we'll be taking a couple of weeks to work on fine points, reviewing the whole form. We'll, uh, we'll break up some of the, we'll maybe we'll, we'll break up the, just looking at the foot movements and really paying very close attention to all the different kinds of stepping that we're going to do, that we do, and how we do all the various kicks. Maybe we'll take um, half of that time to work at all the different hand movements. There's all sorts of different things that happen with the hands. It's not always, the hands aren't always held the same, depending upon if you're going to, you know, cut something or push something or grab something. All the hand is always different. And so we'll be, we'll look at that. So we'll spend, you know, next week finish the form and then spend two or three weeks um, working on some fine details. And then we're into uncharted territories, which would be fun. Okay, so let's go back. Once again, uh, you can follow along uh, this whole section at home. Single whip. Break, circle down, pivot. Circle up, grab, sink and step, and throw. Snake creeps down. Now, some if, if you have a slidey floor, you can just slide this foot back a little bit. Or sometimes you'll see people take one or two little walk backs to give you a little more area. Or you can just open up and go from wherever you are. Shifting back. Keep your body straight. Don't lean over. Keep, you're getting the head back and out of the way. Keep the hand up. Step up to form seven stars. Shift forward, lift. Fold in, fist. Turn out fist. Roll up and step up to form seven stars, dingbo on toe. Retreat to ride a tiger. Relax the hands as you step back, sinking into the left. Neutralize down, turning the toe to face straight forward. Then dingbo stance on toe, replace as you do. Retreat to ride a tiger. Turn around. And kick horizontally. Shift, lift, circle over, and back. And step down. OK, once again, from the front. Single whip. Break. Circle around, grab, and throw. Creeps down, shift back, ducking. Catch, fold in, turn out, and either kick or step. Retreat to right a tiger, step back, neutralize, and up. Turn around, kick horizontally. And shoot tiger with bow, we're going to step down. Right? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, let's go 
And let's do this one one more time. You follow it at home once more time. Can't believe you're getting so so good at this, you know, that look at you remember when we first started, we, we would do like one movement a week or two. Remember? And now you're learning like four or five kind of complex movements in a week, and we still have time to practice it all. So you're doing really well. It's great. I'm proud of you. <clears throat> Single whip. One, two, three, four, five. Snake creeps down. Open and back. Step up to form seven stars. Catch, turn in, turn out, and kick. Retreat to ride a tiger. Empty, turn the toe forward, and block. Turn and kick horizontally. Spin around. Step out to the left. Kick. Okay, and step. All right, let's put this on with the movements that we were working on last week. So we have this nice, huge, big section, uh, and we'll do um, from, we'll do previous single whip, clouds, hands, and on and on and on, okay? So we'll start down here a bit. Single whip, block, block, and round. Waving hands like clouds, catching, turn in to 90. Shifting, sink, keep your weight down. Step to the side, one. Two. Three, single whip, come center, step behind and open, block, pull, hit, high pad on horse, plain cross hands, shift back, relax, press down as you pull in, step slightly inward with the left foot and poke. Turn, cross foot kick with sole. Turn, right hand drops down, left hand comes up to protect. Shift, the hand comes up and you kick and slap. Step up and lower punch. So you have to step down in the front, block, shift. Step straight ahead towards the wall, block. And finally, punch down. Relax. Neutralize off as you come back into center. Then slice upward. Relax. Come into your center. Sink the weight onto the left foot. Step out slightly to the right and cut. Roll back. Press forward and push. Single whip. Circle. Throw. Snake creeps down. Get back and catch. Step up to form seven stars. Retreat to ride a tiger. Turn the toe forward. Turn around or just step ahead. And kick horizontally, low or higher, and step down. OK. So that's beautiful. Let's. Go 
and uh, I'll do that whole section, let's do this whole section, and we might not make it uh, all the way to the end before we have to fade out for our time, but um, you know, this is great. I feel really good about what we're doing, and uh, so tune in, t tune in next week for our, you know, crossing the finish line, okay? So thank you all for your attendance, and um, good luck. Okay. I'll do it facing this time.